My name is Thorsten Novogaard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. Today I will talk about noise in sensors and grains in film. If we start with photography back more than 100 years ago, then you would use glass plates and later you would use film, so that's a piece of plastic, with chemistry on it. So the chemistry here on this film is actual light sensitivity. And that's like the skin on your body, that if you go out in the sunshine, you get burned. Some people, if you have red hair, you get burned in 20 minutes. If you have brown eyes, you can be out all day, nothing really happens. That is what I mean with real sensitivity. And that's what it used in the chemistry. The very first photographs in uh, the midst of the 1800th century, they took several minutes to expose. So that's how long you had to expose the chemistry to light to actually have a picture appear. Then they improved that, so the chemistry got more and more sensitive. And that's how you got down to 1 25th of a second and stuff like that. Uh, but both with black and white and color, if we go with black and white first, the first black and white photographs were basically just black and white. Then they improved the chemistry, and then you started to get more and more gray tones, and it looked like People would look at it in the end of the 1800th century and say, wow, it's almost like being there. And then, you know, 30 years later, it's improved much more. And we think, wow, this is as good as it gets. And then 30 years later, it gets even better. But it's always been a demand in photography that we want to shoot with more light sensitivity. And then when we get that, we want to have even more. But one of the problems with chemistry is that when you get to a certain level, then you start to get the tones under control. So you could say the film behaves properly. But then somebody wants to have it even faster. And then when you increase the sensitivity of the chemistry, then the quality goes down. Then that improves, you get faster speed, and then the quality goes down again. And that's basically how it's been going with black and white. It went like this in speed and quality. And then at one point in the midst of the 1900th century, we started to get into color photogra photography for real. And we went through the exact same curve. The first color photos was not that accurate. Then they got more accurate, then we increased the speed. The quality drops, we increased the speed, the quality drops, and it just goes in levels. When we got to the end of the film era where people went from di film to digital, uh, some of the fastest film that was uh, used for things were 3200 ISO. And even those had noise, and I have one here that I took at 3200. This is a Kodak film. And here you can see the grains almost have like a graphic effect. Uh, the funny thing is we got so used to this noise or grain that we actually liked it. And we talk about that, oh, I like the look of this grain. This specific film, 3200, was used a lot for the White House photographies, so they would use Leica's and photograph with 3,200 ISO inside the White House and reportage around the world. And it gets this very uh, interesting reportage look. Then we got into digital sensors. And they don't deal with chemistry, so there's no uh, increase in sensitivity in a sensor. In the actual sensor that sits inside the camera here is just one sensitivity. And then the way you increase the sensitivity or the ISO is with algorithms. So you simply have a computer algorithm saying that if I pretend that this sensor sees four times more or better light, then this red color has to be like this in, in when it's 4 x and the blue has to be like this. And those algorithms simply just get better and better. It's not that our sensor gets more and more uh, sensitive to light. It's just the algorithms in the camera and in the software that you use to edit that becomes better and better. And that's how we get up to 3,200, 6,400. Now we have cameras that can do 100,000 or 250,000 ISO. It doesn't look great, but probably it will in a few years, and maybe we get into giga ISO. 
And the noise in Digital is a little bit different because that noise is not the noise from chemistry. What it is that is noise from a sensor that can't see. So if you imagine that you shoot with a sensor that sees at 100 ISO, then you take a picture when it's dark and there's this dark area, the shadow under the table. So the sensor can't see anything. So when you increase the light artificially with an algorithm, then the sensor has to figure out, or the software has to figure out, I can't see anything in this darkness under the table, but I'm just going to guess that it's dark and then I'm going to put in a few blue spots and uh, red spots. And then when you look at the picture at the distance, it looks okay. And <coughs> we can see here is a, a digital photo. And even this one is uh, 100 ISO. You basically don't see any grains which you used to see in film. So just with digital, we, we actually improved a lot. And I would say today, most sensors, most cameras can do 3,200, 6,400, and the colors are actually accurate, and also we don't have a lot of grain. And I have one here where we can see this is a photo I actually tested at night in San Francisco. And this is the sensor noise you can see, but it's 6,400 ISO. But then when you zoom out, you see that it's not really relevant to talk about noise because in the picture you don't actually see the noise because you look at the overall picture. And that's how far we have gotten with, uh, with digital and, and digital noise. So there's one interesting or confusing thing with uh, digital noise in sensors, and that is that if you take a camera like this and you set it to 3200 ISO, and then you take a photo in inside where the sun is coming in or something like that, and you zoom into the picture, you won't really see any noise. But if you set it to 3200 ISO and you take a picture in a really dark space and you zoom in, then you will actually see a lot of noise, meaning the sensor is confused. It doesn't know exactly what is this color, what is this. So it's just going to basically guess and put in some splatter. And that's real noise. And of course, that is the instance where you really going to use high ISO is when there's no light. And you're still dealing with a sensor that only sees 100 or 200 ISO. So it basically can see. Uh, and that's why when you have really bad light conditions, that's actually more the reason you get noise than the high ISO. But it's the combination of the two the sensor can't see, and you're trying to pressure the sensor, squeeze it, squeeze as much light out of it as you can. One last detail on cameras is that uh, different cameras have different base ISO of the sensor, meaning what can they see. And if you take uh, the new Leica uh, M240, that camera have a base ISO of 200. The previous Leica, the Leica M9, had a base ISO of uh, 160. And if you take Nikon, typically have a base ISO of 200. Canon cameras have a base ISO of, of 100. So it's usually between 1 and 200 that have a base ISO. Some of the new sensors coming out now, I use Leica because I like Leica, so I know that like a SL and like a Q, uh, they have sensors that can actually go down to 50 and they can go up really high to 6,400. And that's very interesting because that expands the, the area of the sensor. Whereas if you have a camera that has a base ISO of 200, if you go below 200, if you try to shoot at 100 ISO, you actually get noise and you lose a lot of dynamic range, meaning you lose quality of tones and colors. But sensor technology now moves in a direction where you could say the dynamic range, the quality and everything improves of the sensor, but also the range they can work with. You can go really low ISO and really high ISO on the same sensor. And that's really important if you shoot with a sensor, for example, Sunshine, you don't need high shutter speed or use filters to reduce the light in front of the lens to shoot. That was my talk on ISO and uh, noise. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to dig deeper into this subject about light controls of cameras, noise and everything, go to my website. There's a link down here. And buy my ebook, The Freedom of Photographic Expression. If you want to go even deeper, then get my new extension course, 
the OrGuard new extension course that deals with it, and you also get to interact with me. In any case, go to my website and sign up for my free mailing list, and you get free articles and alerts. And also, if you go right now, you get a free ebook. Thank you for watching. See you again.